Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of all things skincare. And here we are wrapping up my favorite skincare products of 2022. And today we're talking about my favorite non-Korean sunscreens. So basically everywhere international. And if you haven't already, go back and watch all my other videos for my favorite skincare of 2022. We've already done cleansers, toners, essences, serums, treatments, moisturizers, Korean sunscreens. And this is the second to last video. After this, it's just body care, hair care, and that's it. So let's get into my favorite non-Korean sunscreens of 2022. I'm gonna start off by saying, just because from products are in this year's favorites does not negate or cancel out prior year's favorites. These are just the products that either launched this year or I tried it for the first time this year that I really, really enjoyed. And I will also tell you right now that there's only two mineral sunscreens in this video. There's also some caveats with those, but I will have the timestamp for mineral sunscreens down below in the description box. So if you want to go to that section of the video, you can just fast forward. So let's get started with some Holy Grail products. These are actually products that I'm, I've emptied or I'm about to empty. They're nothing new, no big surprise. Number one is from Eucerin, the oil control dry touch. And you might be saying, Ramon, you always talk about that. You talk about that since last year. They reformulated it so that it is now water and sweat resistant. And honestly, some people say the textures change. Honestly, I disagree. To me, it wears beautifully still. It still has that nice matte finish, that oil controlling formula. And some people still say that it pills for them. I've never had that issue. This is still a holy grail for mine. Under makeup, over makeup, it never fails me. And I'm happy they updated the formula to be a little bit more heavy duty and have that water and sweat resistance. I believe it's only 40 minutes, but I'll get what I can get, especially with that oil controlling formula I have yet to really find a formula that makes me matte but also controls my shine throughout the day. So holy grail, love the reformulation. And that's that on that. Next from La Roche-Posay, everyone's talked about this sunscreen this year. This is the Anthelios UV Immune 400. This is the reformulation, a lot of reformulations this year, of the La Roche-Posay Invisible Fluid with the added UV Immune 400 or Mixed Roll 400 filter. So it really bumps up and boosts that long UVA wavelength protection, getting into some visible light protection. And truthfully, I love this formula. I know there was a lot of point of contention in the comment section for a lot of the videos I talked about this in, or I was like, I think it's great for oily skin. And people were like, it's still greasy. How can you say that? Skin is subjective. But I never had an issue where this was heavy and greasy on me. And also I'm someone who I will powder if I need to. Again, it comes down to if you want to have heavy duty wear, you have to compromise a lot of times some of the elegance of a formula. I still think this is a great lightweight texture. Is it a little bit more emollient? Slightly. Is it matte? No, I've never claimed this to be matte, but I think it was nicely on my oily skin. And this is really much a time and place sunscreen for me. Like when I know I need heavy duty long wear protection, I'm gonna be sweating, it's summer, summer, summer outside. I always keep those things in mind, but I thought this was a really great launch, a really, really cool launch from La Roche-Posay. They have a tinted version of this. That one for me is hit or miss in terms of how it looks on me and wears on me, just because that tint can sometimes be a little bit too strong. And then they did launch a cream version of this that's really meant to be more for dry skin types. I'm torn on that one because A, to me it's not a much more rich formula. Like I don't see it as being this like dry, dry, dry skin friendly formula necessarily. It is more glowy, that's for sure. And also, I mean, I stay away from Reddit. But a lot of people I've, have told me that apparently on Reddit, they're saying that the UVA protection of the cream formula is not as high as the invisible fluid formula. Just note that. Getting to another favorite of this year. This is from Glow Recipe. This is their Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Sunscreen. Full disclosure, I have a personal relationship with the brand. I did do an ad for this launch, but I thought this was a lot of fun. I love sensory experiences when it comes to products and you rarely see face sunscreen that has the sensory addition to it. A lot of times it's very cut and dry and they smell like sunscreen. This has has that very signature Glow Recipe watermelon scent to it. This is glowy. It says it in the name, Watermelon Glow. And so I will say that as well. This is not intended for those who want a matte finish, but I've always talked about this on the channel. I love a very glowy sunscreen under a matte makeup base because those two just melt together to give you a very fresh skin look. And this is one I love paired with my Fenty foundation because it gave me that. This, I know people talked about the pilling issue. I never had that. This wore beautifully on me, layered over other skincare beautifully. Really, really worked great for me. And I will also note this does have have combination filters. So you do have chemical and mineral filters in this. So on deeper skin tones, there is potentially an issue for a white cast. But I will also say, again, this is water and sweat resistant. So always something you have to consider. You are compromising a little bit of elegance. I believe it's water and sweat resistant for 80 minutes. If not, I'll have it on screen. But they are actually judging up the formula for this a little bit. One thing I love about Glow Recipe is they always take customer feedback and they always reassess what they can improve and what customers want. So we'll see what the relaunch of this looks like. Another sensory favorite and I love a smell. I love a good smell. I I love specifically that nice tropical sweet banana vanilla-y nutty smell. Vacations is a sunscreen that came out with that this year. This is the classic lotion from Vacation. This is an SPF 30, water and sweat resistant. Technically it's a body sunscreen, but I like this for a face if you like a very glowy finish. Note, it is very glowy, but this just smells delicious. This was a really fun discovery for me this year. This was sent to me in PR and I got a bunch of other stuff from the brand. This scent exists in like all their products, but it's just such a nice scent. So if you're someone who loves a really nice moisturized 
body sunscreen and you love to smell good, this is a really great option. And also this layers really nicely over like sweet vanilla fragrances if you want to layer sunscreen with fragrance for the summertime. But oh my God, this just wins to me because of the smell. It's an SPF 30 sunscreen. It's a moisturizing texture. It's glowy, like we've seen it before, but it's just, it elevates it with the sensory experience. I really, really liked it. I'm excited to see what else the brand does just because I feel like they're really kitschy. They're very much about this specific aesthetic, like very 1980s, like surfer infomercial aesthetic. And then all their products are just really, really fun and cute. Like they have that whipped, like whipped cream canister sunscreen. I haven't gotten that one yet, actually. I want to try that out, but I'm excited to see what else they launched this year because they have me, they have my interest peaked. A recent launch from Naturium, again, full disclosure, I have a personal relationship with Susan and the brand, and I actually did do an ad for this one as well. But this was a really interesting launch from an American brand. Again, this is an American sunscreen. Naturium sold at Target and obviously online. And this features US specific filters. And I remember talking to Susan when she was discussing what to do with this. And she was like, I obviously have to abide by FDA regulations, but I obviously want to see how different I can make the formula in terms of like what innovation I can put behind it. That's why I always really like Naturium products because they always think what's going to be the different selling point behind this. And so Susan's big thing, if you don't watch Susan's channel, if you don't watch Susan's content is she deals with melasma. She deals with pigmentation issues. And she was like, what is something I can put in a sunscreen that will have a positive benefit on hyperpigmentation, but it's not iron oxide. So I can make it as universal as possible. And her answer to that was an ingredient called calcium sodium borosilicate, which is an effect pigment. It's a filler pigment basically. So it's something that you can put in products that adjust how the product feels and how it spreads. But that specific ingredient also has benefits in sunscreens. It helps to boost SPF protection as well as offer some blue light protection. So it's really, really good to see if you're targeting pigmentation. And on top of that, she has antioxidants in here, which is really great. This is a dewy, glowy sunscreen. It's literally in the name, Dew Glow. So that's something worth noting. I know all these products are pretty much dewy and glowy. I'm so sorry, but this was an interesting launch. I was really excited about it. I know for a fact she has more coming out. So if you want different finishes and textures, stay tuned, they are coming. But I thought this was a really fun launch. I really like what she did with this. And I think it was a really cool launch from the brand. Okay, so these are my mineral sunscreens. And before I get into it, I will say, these are not deep skin appropriate. I'm gonna tell you that right now. If you have anything darker than a Fenty 340, these probably will not work for you and might not work for you. One of them might, but these work well for me and I will state why they are favorites for the year, but I will also state there's definitely huge room for improvement. And if for one of the brands, I've specifically given them this feedback a few times over and over. So I'm excited to see if and what they do with that. But first up from Live Tinted, this is their Hugard SPF 30. Why I really like this is the fact that it is a gel texture mineral sunscreen. I have yet to really see a mineral sunscreen with this elegant of a texture. It's like a gel moisturizer. Also, the tint of it is pretty much the same color as this bottle, a very rich golden, like marigold color, which I also never see from tinted sunscreens. You always get this weird, like it's too cool or too neutral. So when I put it on, I look very like ghost face. So the elegance and the coloring were really, really interesting. This melts into my skin and it works beautifully into facial hair and everything. And I find it a very elegant texture, but this only works if you're maybe, maybe Fenty low 400s, but this is not deep skin appropriate. And I definitely can't contend for that. It is not going to work if you have deep skin. There's a lot of caveats when it comes to the marketing as well. They do a lot of clean marketing, non-nano zinc marketing. And so I'm interested to see if they take the feedback and do something with that because they were going in a really great direction with this. They could just do a little bit better, but I personally really enjoyed this. And a lot of people always want to know what mineral sunscreens I like. So I thought that was worth calling out. And then the last sunscreen. And again, this, this even more so is not going to be deep skin appropriate. And this is one where I'm like, there's so much good about this sunscreen. If they made it more diverse or had deep skin in mind, it could have been a home run. This is from Bondi Sands. This is their Sunny Days Hydrating SPF 50 Moisturizer. This is mineral and it says hydrating, but this has a very like satin to full matte finish on me. And I love that. The tint of this is very close to my skin color. So it gives me actually nice, light, light, medium coverage where I wear this by myself. It can cover up a good amount of my imperfections. My skin looks very natural satin matte and I mean, it's SPF 50 protection considering that and how it looks and feels on the skin. It's fairly elegant, but because of the coverage and the tint of this, this is not tan, dark or deep skin friendly. And I'm like, so much is right with this. Like so many people want a really nice, elegant matte mineral sunscreen that's tinted that if they had thought about deeper skin tones and given us some more shade selection, this would have been a home run. Also, this is technically a drugstore sunscreen in the UK. You can get this at Boots. That's where I bought this. So this is one where I'm like, oh, it has really nice ingredients, really nice texture, nice finish, but the shade selection is so crap. And so I like it for me, but not everyone has my skin tone and everyone has my specific wants when it comes to mineral sunscreens. So that's why I'm like, mm. and then one more that's an honorable mention. And I liked it a lot this year, but I just, I don't know where the bottle is. It's missing right now is also from Bondi Sands. It's their Hydra UV sunscreen. I'll have it right up here on screen. I really like this one because it's technically a body sunscreen, but it's very different from the conventional Bondi 
Bondi Sands formula. If you tried the other Bondi Sands sunscreen in the white tube, you know that one is shiny. It verges on being way too greasy. That is a dry skin formula. This one, it's more of a normal skin formula, normal to combo skin formula. And if you have oily skin, it's actually a very elegant texture, but it leaves you, it, it's glowy, like all these other sunscreens. It is a glowy finish. But considering the bang for your buck that you get with this, I think it's very, very worth it. And they do actually have a face version of this that I did not like at all. So if you're going to go for the Bondi Sands Hydra Line, the body sunscreen is definitely where it's at. And I really like the texture. I love a sunscreen that I can just get a full bottle, use from head to toe and be out the door. It doesn't have a scent. It is alcohol free. So that's worth noting if you have sensitive skin as well. But that was a very positive surprise. And I got it because fellow SD Alicia Lardy recommended it. And I definitely really loved it. So if you have the ability to get this, I don't know if you can get it in the US. In the UK, when I was trying to get backup bottles, I couldn't always find it. But it's definitely a really cool launch from Bondi Sands. I want to see them launch more matte formulas though. More oily skin friendly formulas. That's all I want from them. So with that, those are my favorite sunscreens of 2022 from Not Korea. Let me know down below in the comments section, are any of these your favorites? What some of your opinions are on these sunscreens and what some of your favorite sunscreens of this last year were? Also, let me know what do we want to see from sunscreens in 2023? Just because as we've seen here, a lot of glowy formulas, a lot, a lot of glowy, dewy, radiant formulas. In my opinion, as I mentioned, I want some more oily skin friendly formulas, but let me know and sound off in the comments section. Don't forget to go back and watch all of my other videos from my favorite skincare products of 2022. By this point, we're almost done. I just got one more video left. I have all those up in the cards here if you want to go through that playlist. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, notification bell to know when those videos go live, as well as my skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching, guys. Bye.